Okay, Ada Wolf here. Um, welcome to Operation Vengeance, turn 3.2 and 3.3, the CCP USSR, July of 1937. Moving right along here in the early war. And um, let's get started with an overview of what's been happening here. Okay, we'll start with the technology here. Um, Germany is hitting on all cylinders. Their scientists are really finding tech. Um, they've hit seven out of their last eight rolls, and they have four on stage two now with improved logistics, long range aircraft, factories, and mechanized infantry. So, doing really well. USA has joined the technology race now, and Italy's hit both of theirs. So two out, two out of two for them, as well as the Soviet Union has. So, um, only unfortunate is the Allies with you, the United Kingdom hasn't hit any. So that's where we're at now. Okay, as far as the income goes, Germany's at max until they go to war. Japan has gone up now. Still have uh, plus two on the oil as they attacked last turn. Britain's now at sixteen. They've gone up plus five. So is the USA, gone up plus five, and FEC and ANZAC also plus two each, and France now is up plus four. And you say, well, how have they gone up so fast? Well, it's um, early attack um, by the Japanese on the Chinese home countries. So you can see here, there's been an early attack, turn two attack, and Japan has been very aggressive against the CCP and has now caused the Chinese factions to unite and the Chinese truce and is allowing them to work together now and occupy the same territories. And so we'll get into more of that once the Chinese turn comes around. But let's go back to now cover just the different theaters. We'll start with the uh, Spanish Civil War here. And it's been quite interesting. Um, we've had two purchases, two rounds of fighter buying from the Nationalist. Uh, they got their recruitment roll last turn, so they're up in extra infantry in Madrid here. And the Republicans have got their recruitment roll as well, and have got some lend -lease, but nowhere near the air power that the Nationalists have. So that's where we're at with that. Um, let's move down to the European theater here. Not much has changed. France is still occupying the Maginot Line here. They've got the Germans slowly building up some armor. They annexed Bohemia last turn. They've got some self-propelled artillery here. And their fleet has moved out of the uh, Atlantic, North Atlantic here into the Black Sea here, or yeah, Baltic Sea. So anyway, that's where we're at with that. Nothing else has changed there. And then we'll get over to the African theater. We've got another mountain from France last turn. We've got another colonial from Italy. So they're kind of a standoff now, but I think Italy might be ready to go. And while we're down here, we need to roll a recruitment roll for Abyssinia for last turn, which they do not roll. So this will be only out of one. And they get a two. Oh, that was close. Okay, so that's where we are with the Abyssinian campaign. Not much else is happening here in Africa. Okay, now we move over to the European, or the Eastern Theater, Far East Theater. We talked about what the Japanese have done to the CCP. Three attacks with no casualties. So that's where we're at with that. And now we'll move right into the CCP's turn. So. CCP will start with purchases. And you can see um, they have six IPPs to spend. They will spend all of it and they will buy two infantry. And now they will go to a combat move, which they don't have any. Um, 
what they will do in non-combat is we will go ahead and move two out of Shinsi into Shanghai. We'll take these two mountain and put those in there as well. Now one thing is I uh, will update, the KMT has been updated now. This is the way the KMT should be. Um, they have a militia in Shantung, Nanking. Last turn, um, uh, they moved two infantry from Xinjiang into Xinghai, cavalry in the mountain from Tibet. The Xinghai had two infantry. They moved those into here. So there's five, two, four, five mountain and cavalry from here. Actually, there's only one. And then they railed, they railed by river here, one up from Kwai Chow. So there should be a total of five. They only had one in Xinjiang. That's one. Two, three, or two here, two here, and one in Kwai Chow. That's five infantry, mountain, and a cavalry. And now the CCP has moved two infantry back, two mountains back. And uh, as usual, once I'm done with my movements, I will erase what I did. And now they will roll their recruitment roll. And they have a three or less, three territories. Let's see what we get. Oh, we get it. Wow. That was a good roll. So, all right. So we're going to go with another, I think we'll go, I think we'll go with a militia, two militia. We'll put one in, oh, let's see here. Didn't expect this, but uh, that's always the case. Actually, no, I think we're going to go with just another infantry. Yeah, so we'll go with another recruitment infantry here in Shanghai. Okay. Um, still thinking about that. No, I think I will go with two militia. Militia here and a militia in Shinsi, I believe. In Szechuan. Yeah, maybe in Szechuan. Okay. So that's what we have there. Yep. Okay, so the Chinese are done. Uh, we'll go up to Mongolia and roll their recruitment roll at a four or less here. Ten. That's a miss. Okay. Um, so that's it for the CCP. They will collect a measly two IPPs now on their chart. They have lost quite a bit of money, so they're only at two now, which is where they stand. And one, two. So if people aren't familiar with the Chinese truce, what that allows the Chinese to do, basically it allows them to occupy the same territories. Um, they can use each other's land zones, railroads, those different things. It's like to act as one country. They're they're, they're aligned now. And as soon as they uh, attack each other, you know, the alliance breaks. Um, for example, as soon as the CCP maybe moves into Xinjiang or Tibet or any of these territories, the alliance is over, and now we're at war again. So but right now we can occupy the same territory, which really gives us a good advantage um, to work together to stop the Japanese aggression. So that's where we're at. Okay, that's the end of the CCP's turn. Mongolia's rolled. We'll go to, to the Republic of Spain now, or Russia. Um, technically, he's going to do some lend lease to them. Uh, so Russia has, actually, yeah, Russia has um, seven IPPs to spend. They will spend all but one for a lend lease Chinese CCP artillery and a Republican Spain upgrade. Well, let me place the CCP infantry here. I didn't do that. So those will go into 
saying hi here. And now we have a total of we have five in, five CCP infantry, five KMT, two mountains, three CCP militia, and then we have a cavalry here. And then we have a KMT has five infantry, a mountain, and a cavalry. So pretty much the same amount of force here for both sides. Um, yeah, quite a bit of force there. A total of 10, 13, 15, 18 units in there now. So that's the C that's the Chinese combined army. Okay. Back to Russia. Russia's done their purchases. Before we do that, um, let me go ahead and roll for their tech. We are now in turn three. So I don't get my extra roll here for income increases. So tech, I'm finished up with improved factories. I've done stage two. I'm gonna roll for advanced artillery now. And that's where we're gonna be on this. And it's a 10. So Russia's also hit a lot of tech this game. Okay, so that's advanced artillery for Russia. I've done their purchases. I will go into Spain. Okay, Spain has one combat move in Eastern Andalusia. They will move an infantry over there from Catalonia along with a medium bomber and a fighter. We have a fighter. We've got infantry. Medium bomber, and we've got a defending infantry. Okay, so infantry is there, fighters here. Move him out of the way for a minute. Armor's here, and defending infantry is here. This is Eastern Andalusia, so here we go. Hoping for one hit from me and none from him. And of course, he gets a hit as well as do I. Whoops. Okay, one nationalist gone, one Republican gone. Territory is still in nationalist hands, but uh, yeah, that's the way it goes sometimes. So, definitely a hit. Yep. I actually have two hits there, so. Okay, so that's it for that. And one of these guys gets upgraded, like I said. It's gonna be him. Upgrade him. And that's Russia's Middle East delivery to Spain. Go ahead and put the Chinese AAA on here as well. Bring this out of turn, but and basically what they're doing is they're then leasing a AAA through Nanking and then through the river here all the way up to Shanghai. CCP anti-aircraft fighter. Okay. Combat movement for Russia. They have a one border clash here. We've got um, against Northern Manchuria here, against one infantry in black here. We've got two fighters in blue. We've got a cavalry at a two, and then five, one, two, three, four, five, ones. Militia cannot participate in a border clash. Okay, hoping for one hit again. And we get the one. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. So we have, we actually have, oh, we have two ones. All right, so he is dead. Now with the border clash, you might think, well, does Russia move in there? Well, they, they don't. In border clashes, it's a special land combat. Um, units involved do not actually move into the opposing land zone. They're just clashing at the border. So it gets rid of a infantry. 
and uh, we stay here. So there we go. All right. Now we'll start. That's the only combat I have. We'll start some non-coms. And we'll move the militia over to Primorsky Cry. These guys stay here. We do the Mongolian roll. All right, so here we go again, non-coms. So we're going to move him down to here. Gives me three infantry, two cav, and Transcaucasia. We will move him up to here. To the Lepetsk from Stalingrad. And to Lepetsk, he moves into Moscow. Actually, he moves into Kurilkursk. Should follow my own arrows here. <laughs> okay, next move, we're going to go into Kaligi Oblast from Moscow. We'll move the Smolensk into northern Belarusia and northern Belarusia into Leningrad. Okay, we're going to move Western Russia into Karelia. And now it's just a bunch of planes. So, seaplane will fly one, two, three, up to Kola. The TAC bomber will fly over to Leningrad, as will the air transport as well. Okay. And that should take care of that move. That one's done. That's done. That's done. I do have two rail movements and at this point. I guess I could have railed him from Stalingrad up to Moscow. Yeah, I could do that. And he could, I guess he could rail into Smolensk. There we go. Okay. Um, other combat moves. These three ships here will go into port in Leningrad. Two subs will stay out here in A14. So in, in port, we've got a light cruiser, destroyer, two destroyers. In the Black Sea, we've got a heavy cruiser, destroyer, and a coastal. And then in the P-1, we've got a cleaver destroyer and a submarine. A more fourth infantry, motorized cavalry, two fighters, nothing's changed there. Militia and Primorsky Cry. Transcaucasia, three infantry, two cavalry. And then everything else pretty much is the same. Oil coerce. Four motorized and infantry, Moscow and infantry, Solminsk infantry, light armor, Kiev the same. Leningrad, three infantry, militia, air transport, and tack bomber. And I believe that is it. Okay, before I wrap up here, I just want to go over some maybe some tips and tricks or strategies real quick here. I'm going to start including this at the end of the game because I think it's, for new players that are watching, I think it's kind of important to know what you're, what we're doing or what, 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 what the factions or different factions, the uh, Axis or the Allies or the common turn are doing. So let's just start with um, Abyssinia since we're here. There's two schools of thoughts of this. You can either defend Abyssinia from the, from the very beginning of the, of, of the game or you can just let it go. If you don't put anything in there the first turn, or the second turn, the Italians probably will attack you, or most likely they'll attack you. You just start with two militia here. Of course, one's been upgraded by Russia the first turn, along with the French Lindleys. Second turn, also a friendly French Lindleys. Two mountains are there. These have been at five, a four, and a two, which pretty much somewhat cancels out the fighter power of sixes here. Um, he's now got two colonials here, so... It's a still a pretty good fight. He might take a swing in at this turn. I don't know. Um, if he goes in there and and, and Abyssinia hits a few times, then Italy's in trouble because it's hard to get pieces down here, though. He's, though he's got a transport now. Um, 
So anyway, that's that. That's that. As far as the Spanish conflict goes here, right now, it's my opinion, uh, uh, somewhat of a stalemate, even though the nationalists have the upper hand in recruitment. But as long as, uh, actually, did I roll recruitment here? I don't think I did here. Um, I have one. I upgraded the militia here, but I did not roll for recruitment. So I only have one, two, three, four territories now. So let's roll for that while I'm here. Ten. It's a miss. Okay. So if I don't get recruitment, I can only uh, lend lease, you know, so much uh, resources to Spain. Uh, Italy has not been lend leased into Spain, so that's a little uh, unusual for a normal game. Usually, Italy lend leases to Spain as well as well as Germany, and they can usually, from those two, they can usually, most of the time, defeat the Republicans. But in this case, I have more manpower, boots on the in, on the ground, so to speak. He has more air power, so we'll see where it goes. But right now, he's got the upper hand with recruitment, and um, he can lend lease from two nations, as I can only lend lease one. Okay, so that's the Spanish conflict. The European is uh, theater is pretty much what's happening here. Germany does usually a build up somewhere in the in the in the west here, and Spain has to or France has to try to defend from that. Commonwealth just is is doing what they typically do, shuffling ships around, reinforcing their their garrison, their strongholds, protecting their territories. Nothing new there. As well as the Soviets, they're just moving things around, border patrols, protecting key resources. Um, looking at what's what's happening, what's what the Axis are doing. Um, so border clashing is 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 pretty pretty interesting. Um, Japan and Russia have not signed the truce yet, and what that truce is typically called is a um, uh, the Japanese Soviet non-aggression pact. Um, so as long as that's not in effect yet, then they can border clash each other, and um, that's what Russia's been doing. They're trying to wipe out all the border the border guards uh border units and uh, japan is now attempting to try to move them south unfortunately he can only move one this turn and the militia has to stay there so i can border clash him next turn but uh unless he moves all his fighters up there now he could easily reinforce this all these planes could fly up there then he could border clash me and i might have to move so different schools of thought there different strategies you can partake um with his Japanese aggression down south here. He's probably not going to defend the borders, so that's why I'm border clashing him. And it's a good strategy by Russia to do that to kind of ease to help the Chinese factions there. Okay. Um, other than that, though, yeah, this KMT is gaining a lot of power. They've already got eight infantry here, four here, two here, five more up here. The only problem is their attack weakness. Um, they don't attack well, but they can defend. And uh, without Marines from Japan, which they only have two right now, Japan is not going to be doing much on the coast. But the, right now, there's nothing really to defend the coast. So Japanese are in a good shape to take some coastal territories next turn if they want, or continue to go after the CCP and the Chinese if they want to attack this, which they can. They have air power, and they might win that. But uh, we don't know yet. So. Okay, um, I think that's about it for strategy and tips and tricks. And uh, um, yeah, so we will conclude here. Coming up will be the Commonwealth's turn to finish up turn three, uh, Italy, KMT, and USA. And that's it. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.